Hello. Today we're going to talk about diffusion maps, one of the most useful nonlinear dimensionality reduction methods. Here are diffusion maps in a snapshot. We have data in ambient dimensions. We then compute pairwise distances. We pass those distances pointwise through a kernel function that gives us affinities. A key property of affinities is that mainly the local relationships are preserved. In diffusion maps, we have an additional step, which is to row normalize those affinities such that we get transition probabilities going from any node to its neighbors. And these transition probabilities sum up to one. When we take this type of a row stochastic operator, which is also called the diffusion operator, and then I can decompose it, the first non-trivial eigenvector gives us the longest coiled dimension in the data. And this eigenvector, along with the rest of them, are called the diffusion map when they're weighted by the eigenvalues. The distance matrix is the first step in the diffusion map computation. Here again, we have a 2D Swiss roll data set. The entries in the distance matrix are distances between pairs of points, here Euclidean distances. In the Swiss roll, we again see this striped banding pattern where there seems to be low Euclidean distance between arms of the Swiss roll that pass each other. When we convert this to an affinity matrix, some of the sidebands go away, but some of the connections there remain. So the graph is still a little bit noisy with connections that are cutting across the manifold rather than staying within it. When we then take the row normalized affinities, which is equal to degree inverse times the affinity matrix, we get this row stochastic diffusion operator. When this diffusion operator is powered to a power t, it computes t-step random walk probabilities going from every node to every other node. These probabilities, when visualized as a graph like this, are much cleaner, with most of the connections just staying within the manifold. Let's see a little bit of why. So in a Markov transition matrix like what we have for our diffusion operator, starting at each node, we have a probability of transitioning to other nodes, as well as a probability of staying put. So the transition probabilities are actually proportional to the distances here, which means that vertices that are far away are not transitioned to with high probability. Here we see another vertex. This vertex too has transition probabilities primarily to its near neighbors. And finally, this vertex over here has a high probability of staying right there and not transitioning to one of its neighbors. Here, if we actually apply this probabilistic transition matrix to a random walk that starts right here at vertex A1, then in a one-step random walk, we stay at A1 with probability 0.35, go to A2 with probability 0.3, A3 with 0.3, and A5 with 0.5. If we power the transition probabilities, via powering of the transition matrix, we understand probabilities of a two-step random walk. See that the two-step random walk spreads probability in this area. This area only goes up in probability a tiny bit. But by the time you get to a 10-step random walk, the probability of going anywhere in this denser area is much higher than the probability of going to this sparser region. And since noise points tend to be not within the density of the data, but rather within the sparse regions, we eliminate the transition probabilities there when we compute t-step random walk probabilities. I hope that made sense. The diffusion operator, as I mentioned, is a Markov chain. Markov chains are not symmetric matrices. So the right eigenvectors are different than the left eigenvectors. The left eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 1 is called the steady state vector. 
And in fact, in a Markov chain, all the eigenvectors have magnitude 1 or less. The right eigenvector corresponding to the same eigenvalue is trivial unless the graph is disconnected. Empowering a diffusion operator is, equal, is equivalent to only powering the eigenvalues in this eigen decomposition. The diffusion maps construction comes from weighted right eigenvectors of the diffusion operator. These are the eigenvectors. They're n-dimensional for n data points. So the ith data points new coordinates are found in the ith entry of every eigenvector times the eigenvalue power to some power t. The eigenvectors are weighted by eigenvalues powered to the t to create the classic diffusion map construction. Again, we leave out usually the first eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 1 as it is a trivial vector. The idea of uncoiling the space becomes fairly clear with the diffusion operator. The idea is the transition probability starting here follow the density of the data. So transitioning all the way over there would take usually many steps and low probabilities. And the first non-trivial eigenvector would track the most dominant nonlinear path through the data. Here's an example about another paper on diffusion maps. Here we have images which are again very high dimensional data points. But we see that the variation between these images is basically only along two dimensions. One is the opening of the mouth, and the second is the portion of the tooth visible. This gives this lips manifold a two-dimensional intrinsic state space. It can be mapped out with just these three diffusion eigenvectors.